It's been a while since I've made a vlog like this, but given that this is the start of the political season, I have a feeling I'm going to make a lot more like it. MSNBC on Tuesday night had a great roundtable talking about what happened after the New Hampshire primary with Donald Trump handling one over his rivals and Bernie Sanders won in what is arguably a landslide over Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. A trouncing, a beating, a, a catastrophic development for the Clinton campaign, but I digress. But in discussing what happened, Andrea Mitchell hit upon Hillary's problem without realizing she hit upon what the problem was with Hillary Clinton. In point of fact, Andrea herself is part of the problem. And I might add, because I don't want this to be thought of as something where I'm insulting Andrea, no, I'm part of it too. What Andrea Mitchell said was this. She said that she couldn't figure out why Hillary Clinton wasn't connecting with the American people, or so it would seem so far, given the developments in Iowa and New Hampshire, because when Hillary Clinton sat down with the media, she had a great time with the reporters. That's what Andrea said. She was, as Andrea put it, I believe, in her elements, talking about Hillary Clinton. She was discussing trade and policy. Well, Andrea, that's the problem. Hillary Clinton, the policy wonk, is not what the American people want today. And there are clear structural reasons why. Structural in terms of demographic, education, and economy. Consider that when Richard Hofstadter wrote his book back then, 56, it was possible for one person to get a job feeding a family of four. That's all but gone in the United States. Let me be more direct. It's possible for one person who has just a high school education to get a job feeding a family of four. Not that it's not possible, because we have the haves, well-educated, versus the have-nots, or not. Not well-educated because we have adjusted for inflation, taken a lot of money out of the economy, a lot of education and investment spending is gone. Think about how we got rid of it. In 1978, to use California as an example, we passed Proposition 13, which caused a number of different property tax rates around the state, hovering at between 10 and 20 percent, almost 20 percent, to come down to 1 percent. What was the concomitant result? Well, less education spending per capita. California's fall from grace once the darling of the country when it came to education spending per pupil. Now, down in the bottom with states that in the past you would thought California would never be compared to with respect to education spending. And then think about what that led to. It led to people not being able to just go to college. Used to me, you could freely go to a community college in California. And the University of California at Berkeley cost me, what, $1,280 a semester? Psh, not today. Cal has costs that rival private Ivy League schools. That's right. It's a public university. Public. It has a private endowment private donations that rival Ivy League schools because the state contribution has been reduced so dramatically from the 74% it was at and a little bit greater than that during the, the 80s, the 70s, and before that, going back to the, Clark, the installation of the Clark Kern model in the late 1960s. But I digress. California is one large example because California is the most populous state in the United States. But think about Massachusetts, which proposition two and a half. 
or any of the other efforts at reducing spending around the United States, spending on education, all of that has impacted the kind of person we produce from the school. And then on top of that, because we've allowed the jobs to go overseas, jobs that once in, allowed a high school level person to get a great, great income and feed a family because we've gotten rid of that, what does it mean? The person that has to pay for their education at places where their forebears didn't have to play for them also has to work harder just to make ends meet, which means what? It means they have less time to read. We have created an anti-intellectual society, structurally developed it, and we're seeing the effects of it. And so in that, you cannot expect Hillary Clinton to connect with that person by talking walk. Gonna lose. You gotta have a simple message, and it has to be a message that speaks to the heart of the people that are going through this. They don't know another way. They're new, they're younger. That's why Hillary Clinton isn't connecting with a lot of younger voters. They come from the system I described. She has to not just speak from the heart, but she has to make it clear that she understands their problems and she has to structure for them a vision of a better society. A society that allows them to do more with the time that they have on this earth. A society that allows them to have a better level of wages. A society that allows them to work less than they do, which gives them more time with their family and more time to read and more time to learn. Think about it. That's where we are today. But Andrea... You should have recognized that. It's fascinating to me that you didn't. But that is Hillary Clinton's problem. And it goes back to something I said in my previous video and I've said before. The Secretary of State, the former Secretary of State, has to stop thinking like Tracy Flick. She's got to find her heart. She's got to be more like Bernie Sanders or Barack Obama, the president. Or she'll lose. Again. And again.